Hello and welcome to Eurogamer's Games of 2013 series. This one is about Sangfroid, Tales of Werewolves, uh, and I'm joined by Chris Donnan, whose uh, game of 2013 this actually is. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, very good, very good. Um, so yeah, I, I, I actually um, haven't played this at all, but you're going to explain why you like it. Yes, and I've also forced you to buy it as well, I believe, on Steam. Oh, really? Which I hope you will enjoy. Oh yeah, you did, yeah. So this is, this is an unusual game, uh, and there's... A couple, I reviewed it earlier this year, and there's a couple of things about it that I just really, really love and I couldn't stop thinking about. Um, firstly, I just want to say what's going on in the background. You're choosing the difficulty at this point. I was choosing the difficulty, and in Sangfroid, I think it means cold blood. Uh, I've just mispronounced it terribly. Um, I started that, to be honest. Difficulty, you choose difficulty by choosing between two brothers, a fat brother and a thin brother. A thin nice. brother's the hardest one. And that just always struck me as a nice way nice way of introducing you to the world of difficulty. Um, what is the game? What, what do you do? It is uh, an unusual blend of uh, genres. The closest thing that people often refer to is uh, Orcs Must Die. And it's, in fact, nothing, reassuringly unlike Orcs Must Die. So it is, on a certain level, a cold strategic game in that you look down on this little... Uh, farmstead which is being attacked every night by werewolves and you place traps and you plot and you plan and you work out how best to get rid of these werewolves using the tools at your disposal that's the strategy part but then every night you're actually dropped into the map as you can see now I'm running around with an axe you're dropped into the map and it becomes a tactical game so you are literally running around smacking werewolves in with an axe and you're seeing your strategy play out around you you know hopefully they will they will some of them will fall to your traps and some of them will be uh, done in by the things you plan during the day in the strategy mode. But at night, it's very much about when a cold calculating plan sort of meets hot-blooded reality and all of the disasters that ensue. So it's a sort of mixture of real-time action and um, tower defence strategy. That's right, yeah. And I think the key thing is it's a mixture of strategy and tactics. So yeah. in, a w in a way, it's a little bit like XCOM, but... It has these a couple of things that really mark it out from being being very unlike any other game I've ever played. One of them is that it is set, as I think you can tell, it's set in um, it's set in Canada in 1858, I think, and it was set in it's set in Quebec. I was going to say it looks a lot like the 18 uh, <laughs> around uh, late, yeah, 1850s. late 1850s. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's set um, in Quebec, and it draws heavily on Quebec. Quebecois culture, which I had actually never heard of, I'm ashamed to say, but there is this part of uh, Quebec where the French culture is very strong. And there are a lot of werewolves. There are a lot. But you joke, but in fact, one of the things that's really appealing about this game is it, it it's based on a, a different werewolf tradition than the kind of the European ah, werewolf so tradition. So it's a sort of folklore thing that's local to the area. Yeah, that's right. And that's really charming. So one of the things that is interesting in um, Europe, werewolves generally, the story goes, you're bitten by one and the next night, the next full moon, you know, mm. you grow lots of hair and your hand extends and then... You're a, oh my god, you're a werewolf. Whereas in Quebecois culture, uh, werewolves are seen to... They, they are in some way a manifestation of the wandering souls of, okay. of either the dead or the very troubled. Um, the script is written by a... a, a, a that guy. A, yeah, that guy up in the tree. A Quebec... Uh, writer called Brian Perrow who apparently is quite famous over there but it, for me playing this game was just a real um, chance to explore this culture that I had never thought about before and I didn't really know much about and I mean like when, when the game when you, the game loads up it plays this crazy song to you this kind of uh, this, this folk song mm. um, and it sounds like a mixture of kind of Iroquois Indian chanting and kind of Celtish folk folk song. It, Can you give sounded, us an example? <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like nothing I'd ever heard before. Okay. So, but like, if you look at, like, so we're playing through the very. I'm, when I recorded this, I was playing through the really early bits of the game. Mm. So you're getting lots of. You're not. You're never seeing a game at its best during the tutorial, but you're getting um, lots of pop ups to how to work things. But I just so so the I other thing. The other thing that's really exciting about this. So if I say like the immersion in this strange culture is really good. The other thing I love about it is that. Um, it is a game which games are full of like um, power fantasies and this is a disempowerment fantasy this is a game about making you feel rubbish I noticed that you had a thing which said you're, you're too tired to attack yes so that little grey bar at the bottom is your constant companion that's your stamina bar and if you run around from, for very long it drains if you swing your axe and miss things or if you swing your axe even if you hit things if you swing wildly it drains you're constantly knackered you never have enough stuff. This is a kind of game where you start a, 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 an evening, and you might have two bullets, and, and you know you have to make both of them count. And it does this, it really, it, it makes you feel knackered, which is not a, a 
a pleasant thing, but, but but what that means is your 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 victories are all the better. Is it sort of short blanket theory, basically? What is short blanket theory? Well, it's a, I think I'm stealing this from football. It's the idea that there's too much pitch and not enough. Uh, you can't get everything. Covered. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so even though the map, even by the time each every few off every few missions, the your your area of influence widens. But even by the end of it, you're not looking after an absolutely gigantic space. Mm. But it is a lot of space for one man to be patrolling. Yeah. Especially when the wolves come in the wolves and the werewolves and the mike and warriors they come in increasing numbers and in waves and there's this amazing feeling where you, you finish off one wave but you know that you haven't played the game well enough that the next wave is going to absolutely murder you've, you you've sacrificed too much for short term games also it's a life on, lesson there as well on a, uh, on, a, on a wider level you can finish a night and save that round you can finish a round but you've spent too much money mm. so and so you're screwed for the next night so it's one of those things where you own your mistakes and mm. I, I it turns out i love that it's really <laughs> unforgiving and it turns out it's quite wonderful when you it? so you say you, you sort of unlock areas does, does this mean that the, sort of the boundaries of your land extend and are there things within those extended boundaries that you gain that help you yeah so but, but so but Essentially, like a tower defense thing, you're protecting a series of houses. Yeah. So you're protecting a series of structures. One of them, the key one, has your sister who is in some weird kind of trance. Um, but over time, you, there's like a, a, a mill will open up and all these different properties which you also have to protect. And it gives you, at the beginning, during the day, you look down on your map from above and it shows you which waves you're going to get and it shows you roughly where they're going mm. and which which of the settlements they're going to attack. And they're often, there'll be like three different settlements being attacked at the same time. Mm. You, there's only one of you, so you know you have to prioritize and you have to decide where am I going to be personally and where are my traps going to be. Mm. And there's an incredible feeling when you get good at the game. And as you can see from this playthrough, I never got particularly good at it. <laughs> um, there's an incredible feeling where you'll be running through the night, you'll, you'll finish off a wolf, and then in the distance you'll hear one of your traps springing yeah. somewhere else across the map and you'll know you got someone else and the plan is working a little bit it re yeah it reminds me in a, a very basic way of um, a little bit of the sort of the zombies mode type thing where your um, your territory um, from Call of Duty where your territory sort of expands as you crack through into new areas and, and with that you gain certain um, extra sort of uh, abilities but yeah, I think the, th the thing is, every ability is the old double-edged sword in that, yeah. you know, you have to choose, you don't have that much money, and you have to choose what, ver you, you, you can't have everything you want, so you have to go, am I going to go with a lot of cheap traps, or am I going to splurge a lot of money on a really expensive net that will collapse on people and drop boulders on them? And then on top of that, during the day, you have a set number of action points to lay out your traps before mm. the evening, and you can trade your action points for money. So it's, it's all of these wonderful little systems which make you think about basically governing, you're, you're controlling scarcity, mm. which is uh, something that I think is very rich for strategy games. There are like three things you want to do and maybe you can only do one of them. So, yeah. so what's it going to be? The other thing which is great is that it has a really, even though as you can see it's quite a rough and ready game, it has really fascinating AI. So the um, there's marks in the corner of the screen. You're, you're basically working with intimidation how much can you intimidate the wolves and and pace out the periods which they attack they have mm. this thing called fear factor which is how afraid they are from, of you at any one moment we're about to go to the strategy part of the map here oh cool i, I want and to see this so remember this is the we're about to go through a cutscene which i skipped quite quickly but um oh, that's yawning that's never good um but um you this is the map and it's it's smallest it's like it's mm -hmm. it's it's its most controllable state. And even now, you see, there are lots of things which you really have to think about. Um, wait a minute, just... Also, I, even the, I, the art really grew on me on this game. The first time, it's an odd-looking game. I love the little run animation where you see oh, yeah. almost scampers. Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's just... Um, Everything about this game, even the, the things which are creaky about it become really charming, but also the things which are just really Ooh. precise and uh, beautiful. Yeah, so here is your basic map. And there you see down in the middle, you can see that is a wolf which is going to attack in the first wave. Oh, so you could click on, looks like a scroll. Yeah, the little card. Right. It'll tell you, you can click on it and it'll show you where it's going. And then those other dots are, are enemies which are going to attack in the second or maybe third the red wave. Dots. Yeah, the red right. dots, sorry. Um, so here it's making me place some, this again, we're still in the tutorial, so it's making you place some wolf traps which are really simple but never underestimate. Another great thing, any strategy game where the first tools, the most basic tools you're given can still be really useful towards the end yeah. of the game, it's absolutely got that. Um, wolf traps are really nice and simple, they kind of eat away at a wolf's health and you can power yeah. them up so they delay wolves as well. Then there is, we're putting a net. The net is really interesting because you actually need to be, the wolf traps will go off 
uh, when a wolf steps on them. But the net, you need to be nearby because you need to shoot it to get, uh, bring it down. Yeah, yeah. Also, on top of this, it throws things like uh, the wolves can smell you. So later on in the game, you are almost kind of... Um, Broadcast. You get a, an amulet which allows you to change the wind, so you can kind of shift your scent around and kind of oh, sweep okay. around and collect oh, wow. and kind of kite wolves to to you. But can you play this with other people? Is no, there... you can't. You play oh, it. It's, it's purely on your own. Though I mean, it's one of those games which weirdly you can play other people in the sense that you and I could mm. sit down and we could talk about it and we'd have an amazing time. It's, yeah. it's one of those games which is like an informal multiplayer yeah, game. Sure. Um, uh, but I absolutely was captivated by this it has got rough edges and there are certainly moments where you finish a level in defeat and you never mm. want to see it again but it turns out you never want to see it again only for half an hour and then you're like oh I'll have another go each each failure is teaching you something else something I'm interested in just the, the sort of the moment to moment feel of it I mean what, what is it like to control is it very fluid is, is, is oh it's, is it's it... a little bit ropey so moving is a bit of a pain and as you can see the camera is I say it seems bit, skittish it is a little bit skittish and also you have you, there's no lock on and this axe you can really waste you can waste a swing of your axe yeah. but, and just miss um, and it like so the gun takes ages to reload but these things are all Part of the charm, right? Some of them are on purpose, like the gun is meant to take a long time to reload. And even the slightly rough edges, they really reinforce this sense that you are a knackered out lumberjack. And that, you know, you're not in the first flush of youth and you're fighting all these dogs and that's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those games which gets away, it, it's rough edges really do almost add something to it, which I know mm. sounds ridiculous, but I think in certain cases it's true. Yeah. So, th so this is this guy, the stout looking fellow. Yes. Um, he, he, we're, obviously we're playing as him. There's the, there's the other guy who's the, the slimmer guy. What are the general differences? It just like it's scarcity and AI. I mean, I, to tell the truth, I haven't played as the thin guy very much because mm. I find it more than challenging enough to play as, uh, as Dr. This is the Fatty. Low, yeah, this is the lower, lower yeah. difficulty guy. Uh, so what I've done there is I've shouting, which brings the wolves to my attention, but I'm shouting underneath this nice. trap, and in a minute I compl I think I completely missed this shot. I may <laughs> I may get one of the wolves. Do you trap the wolf? But yeah, you, so basically out. it'll just do a lot of damage. So I think it kills one of the wolves, but the other one got through. Oh, I see. So you have to release the... Yeah, you have to be there for it. Like, the, and there, there's a mixture. Different traps work differently. So by I the end of the yeah. game, by the end of the game, you're really... You can put up these control towers, which allow you to zip between different areas of the map really Funny. quickly. Then you come down, and you might have an explosive barrel, which you need to shoot to get it to explode. Meanwhile, you've got traps going off in other parts, which you don't need to be around. You, you're placing bonfires, which kind of guide the wolves to certain points. You're trying to create... You're looking at the map, and you're trying to find natural pinch points where two or three lines intersect. And it's very good. It's very good at creating these... Even though it, it, it's a strategy game which you can play any number of ways and get any number of mm. results, each map rewards looking for the little the little uh, secrets of it. It's 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 kept me busy for ages and ages. Yeah, I love I love that sort of the notion that there are little things you can sort of dig out as you play around with it over time. And it, even though it is so brutally hard, it is a very playful game. It totally rewards people who become a little bit obsessed with it. I mm. talked to the uh, developers earlier this year because after I played it I was just so fascinated as to where it came from Ooh, this and, guy. oh this is a more this is a proper werewolf yeah but I was even, gonna say. even so he's 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 pretty low on the pecking order by the end of the game you think oh werewolves just three of them that's no problem mm -hmm. um, I spoke to the developers who made it and really interestingly they had come from uh, EA and they'd worked on some sort of charm no some some polished but rather charmless EA product products which could have come from anywhere this was a real attempt to make a game that came from their own culture and which spoke to their own culture which yeah. took their culture out to the wider world and I think I, yeah. that's amazing I, 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 I agree and I really love the HUD actually just looking at it here Oh yeah, yeah it's, there, it's very much like everything is kind of like uh, it's, all, it's all kind of skin and bark yeah, and exactly. stuff like that. It's like they've pulled it out of um, it's like this sort of leathery and and, and home crafted. And, and look at that, you can tell even by you know, but just by the animation, you can tell. God, this guy's knackered, and I just completely yeah. wasted a, a special extra shot. And now you're dead. And, and now I'm dead. That's probably uh, that's it. A good place to wrap it up. <laughs> so thank you very much, Chris, for talking us through your game of 2013. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, happy Christmas, everyone. This is Sangfroid. Uh, go and buy it. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Bye. Bye.